Practical Decision Making in Refractive Surgery Episode 10 The 5-Step Practical Approach Part 7 In this video, I'll start talking about the option of clear lens extraction or refractive lens exchange. But before that, I'd like to correct a slide in the previous video. The correct information is the internal anterior chamber depth should be at least 2.8 millimeters in the posterior chamber type of fake IOL and at least 3 millimeters in the anterior chamber type of fake IOL. So when we look at the tomography, we have to consider the internal anterior chamber depth. And as I mentioned, the depth should be at least 3 millimeters in the anterior chamber type and at least 2.8 millimeters in the posterior chamber type. So back to the option of clear lens extraction. This option is off-label, which means that there must be a very strong excuse to go for such an invasive procedure. This procedure consists of replacing the accommodating clear crystalline lens by an artificial non-accommodating IOL. Based on that, we can talk about this option in terms of using one of two methods, the mono and mini mono vision method and the premium lens method. Starting with the mono and mini mono vision method. In mono vision, both eyes are implanted with monofocal lenses. The dominant eye is targeted for distance, while the non dominant eye is targeted to be myopic by minus one. 25 to minus 175 diopters to aid near vision. This creates a gap in the intermediate vision, which is important for computer working distance and car dashboard. Therefore, this patient won't need glasses for reading, but for PC. This type does not induce dysphotopsia. This photopsia is glare and halos, especially at night. The mini monovision is a modified monovision. The non-dominant eye is targeted to be myopic by minus 0.5 to minus 0.75 diopters. Therefore, the intermediate vision will be good, but at the expense of near vision. So the patient will need reading glasses for fine prints. This type does not induce dysphotopsia as well. However, in both mono and mini mono vision, the decision is based on the tolerance test that will be discussed later in detail. The other method is clear lens extraction with premium lens implantation. There are three types of premium lenses multifocal, trifocal, and extended depth of focus lenses. The old type of multifocal lenses had high add, ranging between plus 4.5 diopters and plus 3 diopters for the near zone of the IOL. And that was to cover the near distance perfectly, but that created a gap in the intermediate zone which means that the patient won't need reading glasses, but will need glasses for the computer. This type was associated with strong dysphotopsia. New designs of multifocal lenses have reduced multifocality to increase patient satisfaction and minimize the gap in the inter intermediate zone by reducing the ad. That gives better, but not perfect, intermediate vision, and the near vision is not optimum. This means that the patient will need reading glasses for fine prints. The patient usually does not need glasses for the PC in spite of the small gap in the intermediate zone. That's because binocular vision can overcome this small gap. This photopsia is common with this type but not as bad as in the old type.
Trifocal lenses are better than multifocal lenses in covering the intermediate zone of vision, but the near zone is still not optimum. Hence, the possible need of reading glasses to read fine prints. This type may induce some dysphotopsia, but less than that induced by multifocal IOLs. Premium lenses with extended depth of focus are perfect for distance and intermediate zones, but not for near vision. Therefore, the patient will need reading glasses. The dysphotopsia with this type is very uncommon. Some surgeons may mix by implanting an extended depth of focus in the dominant eye and a trifocal lens in the non-dominant eye to obtain better results in terms of vision and reduction of dysphotopsia. With this mix, patients may need glasses just for fine prints. In addition, this mix method does not induce dysphotopsia in general. This table compares the different types of lenses in terms of accommodation, distance, intermediate and near vision, dysphotopsia, induction, and contrast sensitivity affection. As we see here, in all types, the patient will lose accommodation. In all types, distance vision will be good. Intermediate vision will be affected by the monovision method and the old multifocal lenses. Near vision will be good in monovision and old multifocal lenses. Otherwise, the patient will need glasses in the extended depth of focus and will need glasses for fine prints in mini monovision and the recent multifocal lenses and may need glasses for fine prints in both trifocals and mixed method. If we grade dysphotopsia from 0 to plus 4, where plus 4 is the highest, old multifocal lenses induce the worst dysphotopsia, plus four. The recent multifocals or the later multifocals will induce almost plus three. Trifocals will induce plus two. The extended depth of focus lenses will induce plus one, while the mixed method may not induce. However, the monovision and mini monovision do not induce dysphotopsia. Contrast sensitivity is not affected by the monovision and mini monovision methods, while it is affected by all other types. The worst is the old multifocals, comes after the later multifocals. Trifocal affects contrast sensitivity but to less extent in comparison with the recent multifocals, the extended depth of focus has the least amount and in the mixed method there might be some affection of contrast sensitivity. In the next video, I will start talking about the workup for clear lens extraction in case of monovision and mini monovision. Thank you very much.